So I came across a bit of a weird situation recently with a website that I established was related to tracking. Now normally I would chuck this sort of thing in the no track block list and then that would be it, done, walk away. But it turns out the company who owns it has a bit of a aggression. <laughs> That's one way of putting it, I suppose. Uh, anyway, aggression towards uh, ad block. So EasyList put one of their domains in their block list and this company, Admiral, tried doing a DMCA claim against them. DMCA claim against GitHub and EasyList had to back down. So that was with one domain. Now, as it stands, I am aware of 360 of their domains and in total of well, more inactive domains of theirs, it's over 700 I'm aware of. So what would they do? Anyway, let's show you the story and we'll talk a bit more at the end of this video. So this was the weird looking domain that I came across. It's two words, distributiontomatoes.com, two random English words, and that turns out to be the pattern that uh, Admiral use. And we have the timeline. This is from OpenDNS. I can't share this page with you, but this is the level of login that OpenDNS have. You have to pay for this service, that's why I can't share it. Anyway, what you have is we've got nothing, 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 then all of a sudden on September the 7th, it goes up to around, well, that's a peak of 24,000 queries per hour. So that's quite a jump and very unusual to see. And it turns out it belongs to this email address, copyright access control at 11labs.com. And yes, they own quite a few domains. So it has 500 limited in this. So if you use the API, you can get more of the domains. So who are 11 labs? We're helping publishers manage access to copyrighted content. And I got various repos here, but if you go to the page, it suggests that it's associated with Get Admiral. In fact, go into that 11 Labs website, just links you across to Get Admiral. So we have Relationships Matter. Growing great relationships leads to the best in life and in business. The Visitor Relationship Management Company a single platform in helping publishers grow visitor relationships and revenue. So when they talk about visitor relationship, that is a glorified way of saying we track the people who visit a website. We track and invade their privacy and we want to know everything they do on the internet. Now, funny enough, they don't say it that way, but uh, that is exactly what they do. They want to invade your privacy. But yeah, it wouldn't be very nice to anyone who happens to look at these domains and then they would think, oh, I want to block this. Instead, people just go about their life like uh, nothing much happened. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm very much keen on privacy on the internet. <laughs> That's a very strange thing I know, and I am aware of the irony that I put videos on YouTube. But this isn't the only platform I use, so yeah. So I talked, so I talked a bit about this on Twitter, and I looked at one of their other domains. I'm sorry I actually put that wrong. It's not cannot win, it's Canon Twin. So it's associated with OregonLive.com. On the left, this is how it looks with Canon Twin enabled, and on the right is with the domain disabled. So, so we can establish this is an ad block recovery tracker. It is what I would call an annoyance. I have every right to control what information my computer downloads and receives. I shouldn't be bullied into having to receive data from all websites. So there was a good response from Chris Jackson. I thought that name sounded familiar. They are the awful people who DMCA'd EasyList over including one of their domains, assume malign intent on any and all of their domains. Yes. Yes, I can fully agree with that. And if we look, this is what Admiral tried doing. Oh, look, this is a terrible layout for a website. Now let's use this thing they don't like and just clean up this page for them, shall we? So, the element zapper mode of uBlock origin. Ah, that's a little bit easier to read now. <laughs> the irony that they don't like ad blockers, but it made their site more tolerable to visit. So Admiral asked EasyList to remove functional clam from their filters, and here's why. So it's not an ad server, it's part of a DMCA copyright access control platform. Admiral provides Publishers, they can engage in visitors in a transparent way. So that's a form of tracking, okay? So you may not be advertising, but it is a form of tracking. 
and circumventing a publisher's paywall or copyright access control platform is not okay, and we don't believe it's caused the mission of Adblock Plus and EasyList. We'll have to argue that if your copyright access control is a JavaScript dependency on a third-party website, then that is a pretty poor way of control. They ended up submitting a DMCA takedown notice to GitHub, and I'll follow this on from another page, but yeah, they're uh, obviously quite proud of what they've done here. And it ended up in a few press articles at a time, but there's not been anything much more after this. So anti-ad block infirm Admiral deals potentially damaging blow to ad blockers. So the request was to remove functional clam as part of a DMCA takedown notice. The question now is, does DMCA actually apply to domain names? If so, this is very bad news for ad blockers because the list they rely on could be forced to essentially close down. According to the US Copyright Office, the copyright law doesn't protect domain names. Okay, well that's good. Admiral, an anti-ad blocking company, which was behind the removal of the link, said the domain is part of DMCA copyright access control platform, and the company says it remains committed to working with EasyList, Adblock Plus, and other ad blockers in future to resolve issues like this. And the maintainer said we had no option but to remove the filter without putting the EasyList repo in jeopardy. If it is a circumvention ad block warning ad host, it should be removed from EasyList, even without the need of a DMCA takedown request. We'll certainly look at our legal options and it will be contested if we get DMCA requests for any legit ad servers or websites that use DMCA as a way to limit EasyList's ability to block ads. And the well-respected EFF or Electronic Frontier Foundation has reached out to EasyList to offer any legal assistance should the project need any. So I couldn't really find much more beyond that. But looking at that website I found earlier, so it's Canon Twin and we have, well, getting up to a peak of 18,000 visits per hour. So DuckDuckGo do some analysis on identifying tracking websites. And sure enough, they have found Canon Twin. Because if I look at my process list of the DuckDuckGo tracker radar domains, it is classified as a low certainty. There we go. Canon Twin tracker low certainty. The trouble is there's a lot of legitimate websites that fall into this low certainty of being a tracker. That's just the way it is. So I haven't seen any DMCA takedown requests against DuckDuckGo, but I suppose their service is very much automated and could pick up anything. So the question is what to do with this information. So as I've said, I've got about 360 of their domains. This is one of the spreadsheets, 340 in this one, and yeah, there's another 20 or so in another spreadsheet. So I'm going to have to be careful how I classify these. Now I could classify them as an annoyance because this seems to be what it is. We're not gonna call it adverts, we're not gonna call it tracking, but we could call it an annoyance, a waste of bandwidth, a waste of CPU resource. I don't want my computer going to any of these websites just out of principle. I don't want it to be tracked in this way. I don't care about the warnings of ad blockers, but my computer in fact, I don't really use ad blockers directly. This is just a coincident on what they're trying to pull down. I have a few websites blocked that may be advert related, but I'm more focused on blocking tracking websites. Difficult decision, but what do you think? Should I walk away from this, pretend I've not seen anything, or go ahead and chuck all these domains in a no track block list? Let me know what your thoughts are. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.